One of the most fundamental ways to grow a real estate business is having a geographical farm. What I want to do today is, is I want to give you the questions you need to ask, the things you need to look at before choosing your farm area that will lead to success. There are very few top producing realtors I know or team leaders that don't have a geographical farm that they're actually out there continuously adding value to and just raking market share in these specific areas that they're farming. So what I want to do today is, is to give you the fundamental questions, really five questions you need to ask to make sure that you're starting the process of choosing the right farm area for you, something that's going to be worth your time, worth your effort, worth your resources. So let's start with the first point. Evaluate the total sales volume for the area you're considering. So let's do an example. Let's say that this farm area has 300 homes for sale um, and in a typical market environment, it would be 30 homes that would sell that year. Let's say that you look at this and you see that that was that. Just to make the numbers easy, the average sales price would be 500,000 just to make the numbers easy again for me. That means that we're going to have roughly $15 million worth of sales volume. That's a pretty substantial amount of sales for an area that we might concentrate on. Now when we've got that number, we understand that there's going to be buyers on that. So that gives us a total sales volume for that neighborhood or for that farm area around $30 million. Pretty good size market. And now we understand that we've looked and seen that in the last 12 months there's enough sales volume for this to possibly check the first box and move on to the second question. The second question is, now that we've gathered all the sales for the last year and we can see this, is there a dominant agent in this market? Now, it doesn't mean that we're going to shy away from competition, but what it does mean is if we can find one that does not have a dominant agent, what I consider a dominant agent is anyone that listed 20% of those houses in the past year. So if we're talking about, let's just use that again, and understanding that there were 30 houses that were sold in that neighborhood, if anybody has 7, 8, 10 They've got over 20% of that market where they listed those homes. It doesn't mean that we're going to shy away from it again, but what it does mean is, is that we're going to look for opportunities in places where we have low-hanging fruit. If there's not a dominant agent, it means that that market is fragmented. There's not someone that is already probably farming that area, someone that's spending money, time, and effort, and that has built relationships. So that gives us an understanding that, hey, listen, if there's not a dominant agent, somebody that's done 20% of that, this is somewhere that we've checked the next box, and now we can move to question number three. All right, the third step is to identify how much GCI, gross commission income, is available in this farm area. Now we did this, we really, this is the process we were looking at. We wanted to first see, is there enough turnover in the neighborhood? Are we seeing enough sales to make it make sense? We checked that box. Second thing we looked at is, was there a dominant agent? No, there was not a dominant agent. Now we want to look at what are the dollars? What is the opportunity in this neighborhood? So let's just use that. If it's a 3% commission rate and we're talking about an average sales price of 500000 and we're talking about 30 sales, we're talking about $450,000 worth of gross commission income on the listing side that's available in that neighborhood on an annual basis. Again, we talked about the fact that there is also the buyer side opportunity. So in reality, we're looking at something where we can double that number. We're looking at about $900,000 worth of opportunity for gross commission in this one neighborhood. Pretty good volume there, and that takes us to question number four. Question number four is, okay, now that we understand how much the dollar volume is there, um, with the standard situation where we're gonna basically commit to this area for nine to 12 months that we're gonna do the farming, if we take 10% of that market, is it worth our time? So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to just take that $450,000 gross commission. Let's say that we get 10% of the listings in there. We should get more than that if we do this correctly. I'm going to give you the exact process. But if we're doing that where we know that if we take 10%, the numbers are going to make sense to us. Now we can get an idea. So 10% of that $450,000 is $45,000. This is the way that I always evaluated a farm area and planned on my budgeting for that farm area. I wanted to understand that I was going to be sending a direct mail piece once a month at least and once I began to get listings I was going to be sending more than that because I'm going to have just listed just sold that I was going to be sending to the neighborhood but I knew that I was going to be doing those things I knew that I was going to possibly hold one to two events in the neighborhood per year that could be anything from holding a movie night in the park that you sponsor for the HOA it could be having a family photo day in the park it could be something along those lines where you did something for the neighborhood that was going to have some expense for you I broke this down that I would count on spending two dollars per day or I'm sorry two dollars per month on each of the households. So if there's 300 households, I was going to spend basically 600, 300 households times the $2, I'm going to spend $600 per month to be able to generate those at least 10% market share. Now I can figure that out. If I'm spending 600 per month times 12, that's going to give me $7,200 on an annual basis that I was going to budget to market to this farm. 
$7,200 is the expense on the financial side. Now, we talked about the fact that if we could take 10% of this market share, we're going to be taking roughly $45,000, 10% of the $450,000 gross commission that was generated with that 10%. Basically, that's taking 10%. Again, we should be taking more than 10%, but I want to look at it from a worst case scenario. 10% gives us basically $445,000 worth of gross commission. We're going to have our splits. You can figure all of that out for you just to make the numbers easy. Let's just say that after splits and everything, we're talking about roughly $30,000. I'm just using that just off the top of my head just to make the numbers easy on a very conservative basis. We saw that it was going to cost us roughly $7,200. We can then see that we're going to generate, if we can take 10%, almost $30,000, possibly a little more. We're talking about six times earnings on what our spend is. Now we've got something where we know that these numbers make sense because really what we see is is that if the average listing is 500,000 times 3%, that's 15,000. It's $10,000 10, roughly if I'm just using a really conservative number of what your split is. If $10,000 is what we can anticipate net out to us on each listing that sells and we've only got $7,200 of spend for the year in that neighborhood, now we know we only need one listing that sells in that neighborhood that's going to make this profitable. This is an opportunity that we've been looking for. So now it's checked off the boxes of identifying what the total sales volume and that there's rotation enough. We've checked off the box. There's not a dominant player. We've seen what the opportunity is as far as the total sales volume. And we've seen what it is that it's going to cost us and what we need to do to break even and possibly even take more market share. And it's checked all those boxes. Now it becomes to the fifth and final step, which is do you have the capacity, time and resources to focus in on this farm area? This is an important question. Listen, a lot of people want to farm, but they don't have the commitment to make sure that they're getting a mailer out on a monthly basis. They don't have the commitment to take the time to spend promoting having an event in that neighborhood. Is this a neighborhood that you really enjoy being around? Are the owners in this neighborhood people that you can relate to or that you aspire to be? You want to have a neighborhood that inspires you because you love this neighborhood, something that you love selling, that you have an ease with that type of client. You see, when you understand exactly what it's going to take and you're willing to make that commitment, now we've found the farm that's ideal for you to spend the time, spend the resources, spend the effort to make sure that you can be a dominant player. We're running these numbers based on a 10% and we're seeing 5x, you know, possibly 4x on your money. If you're doing this correctly, you could take 20, 30% of the market share in a way that gives you a consistent flow of leads as far as listings, which then having the listings we know is going to generate the buyers. Now we've got something that systematically helps you grow your business. Listen, if you're considering making a, developing a farm area and you want more detail on exactly how to do this, I've got a link above where you can actually go and see exactly the process we utilize to make sure that we've identified and expanding on how to market to that farm. I hope this video has been helpful and I look forward to talking to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. I specifically chose the video below for you because it builds on the one you just watched. I hope it's helpful and I'll talk to you soon.